You can't destroy me. Look, he's sitting up! <laughs> Trick question. What is the first skill a motorcyclist learns? Not this. Or this. Definitely not that. It's this. Through two rings, back through one. That's how motorcycle helmets stay on, with a friction knot technology as old as rubbing sticks together. More truthfully as old as belt buckles from 14th century Rome, but those are still related to rubbing sticks if you think about it. Surely we should have advanced since then. Back in 1979, a man comically named Dick Tracy invented the side-release buckle. Bit of a misstep not to call it the dick clip, but you'll find it on every modern helmet nonetheless, except motorcycle ones. Then in 97, Burton patented this ratchety thing for snowboard bindings. Anything harsh enough to bind a boot shouldn't be put around your neck, but a few European sadomasochists run micrometrics on their lids. You know how the French are. Then, just five years ago, we saw the latest invention. Magnetic, expensive, and over-engineered, Fidlock is the type of thing that only comes from Germany. So despite three faster alternatives, the old double D ring still dominates. Is there something timeless about a set of double Ds? Or is it just safest? Dublin, 2016. A 24-year-old motorcyclist is killed when his Quick Connect buckle fails. A RISE expert witness testifies that a double D may have saved his life, being the only buckle that's approved in all types of motorsport. Sounds damning. But convention is not perfection. Old tech has flaws too, us Luddites just ignore them while judging the flaws of new. So today, we test what's really safe. This scissor jack lifts 5,000 pounds. More than enough, because manufacturers sew buckles on with a box X stitch that breaks at 1,800 pounds. Also, more than enough, since the nylon webbing snaps at 900. It's no coincidence that 900 pounds across this distance is just shy of what hangmen consider to be neck-breaking work. Now, put bluntly, at 900 pounds, you're better off snapping the strap and trying your luck without a helmet than letting it take your head off. In a perfectly engineered world, all these buckles have to do is bear over 900 pounds. 901, 9001, doesn't matter, but if any of them break before the strap, that's a fatally weak link. Am I out of the shot here? Yes. Okay, still in frame. That was 5.82. It's probably the most, the one I'm most uncertain about. Broke through the plexiglass. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Do we survive? Everything's good. Okay, let me pick up these. That was 9.81. Should be good. You ever, you ever seen the movie Blade? Definitely a 
strap failure. Was it? <laughs> oh yeah, look at this thing. Oh shit. Look at that, right on the, right on the thing. So that's what it's made to do. So the double D is safest. Admittedly in the rare crashes that impart significant removal force to your helmet, but well, plane crashes are rare and we all want metal buckles in those. Even if this safety conclusion weren't conclusive enough, there's another hefty reason to make like Hefner and demand double Ds. They are infinitely and inescapably adjustable. Riders have no choice but to set the tightness every time. See, the better part of motorcycle protection is protecting motorcyclists from themselves. If you give people a set it and forget it buckle, it is doomed to be forgotten. Be honest, you all have a bicycle helmet that you've been neglecting to retighten. To all the manufacturers, stop with this gadgetry, this gimmickry, and this garbage. Two loops is all it takes to make a connection stronger than the strap itself. We shouldn't have to pay more for you to reinvent the actual wheel, only to do a shittier and scarier job of it. You've been told, now don't forget to dislike and unsubscribe. I think he's going the distance. Oh, look, he's sitting up. This is so, so off. He's just staring you down. He's like, <laughs> he's like, what? You can't destroy me.